Hi everyone, this is Jim's wife, Catherine, here. I'm narrating the beginning of our video where our microphone wasn't working. So anyway, here's Mason. He's cutting out a nice stock blank for us uh, that we're going to test stains on today. We often do something like this, actually, around the shop. One of us will ask a question, wonder how something works, and then we immediately go and try it out. And if I remember to, or if I can keep up with Jim, I usually try to grab the camera and sort of capture it. So anyway, here is Jim preparing the stock for us. This is a nice curly maple, and he wanted to point out there how nice those shavings were coming, that uh, it's a nice sharp hard scraper that he's using, and it's gonna do an excellent job of getting that stock ready to accept uh, stain and uh, really bring out the grain without having to go through the multiple grits of sandpaper and whiskering. So here is uh, just sort of a close-up. You can see it's got some very nice figure. Um, it's not super strong in these pictures, but it, it really was a nice stock, and you'll see this later as we get the stain on it. He's just dividing it out into a few sections, and I will let Jim take it from here and I apologize for the quality of the video by the way like I said I'm just trying to keep up with Jim sometimes so like I said we're going to try a few different stains just for fun on this to see what it looks like so the first one is iron nitrate this is what we recommend on curly maple it's also known as aquafortis or ferric nitrate iron nitrate all the same thing it's a very traditional stain. It's a combination of nitric acid, water, and iron. Works very well. We also have some dye stains. These are made by Laurel Mountain Forge, honey maple, and maple. So we'll see what they look like. Let's go ahead and start with those. Honey maple, number one. There's honey maple. There's maple. Gives a little more contrast to the stripes in the maple. Pretty nice curly wood there. Now we'll do the iron nitrate. We'll find a clean spot on the rag. We're gonna go ahead and do two sections iron nitrate, then we'll take one and maybe use some dye over the top of it just to see what it looks like. slightly curlier area up a little further. So with the iron nitrate, we'll let it dry a little bit. We'll let it sit on there, dry maybe 15, 20 minutes. I probably won't wait that long, but if I'm doing a gun, I'd wait that long. So it looks kind of greenish when you first put it on. But then what we'll do is we'll heat it with a heat gun. And then that changes the, uh, the chemical makeup of the stain particles and uh, the color will change. So we'll come back here in a little bit. Okay, we're back with you now. So it's been, I don't know, maybe 10 minutes, but usually we'd wait a little longer. So we're gonna heat this iron nitrate with the heat gun. So you want to heat it plenty, but you don't want to scorch it either. You'll see a dramatic color change when it 
starts to go. So if you guys have any questions about this, you know, just, just ask. I'm not always the greatest about getting uh, back in comments, but maybe we'll try to do better on this video. So, and if you have any suggestions for videos you'd like to see, let us know. Okay, so that's what you're looking for. You probably saw that there's a pretty dramatic shift in color. If you don't heat it enough, it'll look green. Now, you might think that the color doesn't look that great right now, but when you put your oil on is when you're gonna see a big difference. So sometimes people think, oh, this doesn't look too good right now. The oil is what's gonna make it happen. So now we can kind of compare, even though none of them have oil. When I look at the, the dye stains, they look pretty weak. They look weak and washed out. Now we might be able to put another coat on and help them out a little bit. But for me, dye stains alone often have a lot to be desired, just to be honest. It's a product we sell, but I prefer to use them in conjunction with the iron nitrate if you want to adjust color at the end. Let's get some oil to put on this and we'll see how it looks. I'm gonna get a thicker oil to try and true so it doesn't penetrate into our wood so far because otherwise yeah. it could jeopardize the stock a little bit. Yeah. So as a finish, I'm gonna use some of this, which is tried and true oil varnish. It's basically linseed oil. I guess it has some rosin added to it and I'm not sure what else they've done to it. They may have pre-catalyzed it, I believe, by letting it stand in exposure to oxygen or something, I don't know. But it's pretty good stuff, it's a traditional formulation. Don't go to the hardware store and buy linseed oil because it's, it's terrible. If you want linseed oil finish, use something like this. So we'll start with the iron nitrate here. So with all this curl, it's really soaking up the, the oil. Getting all kinds of fuzz from that rag. Let me get rid of some of this fuzz. There we go, we can see it a little bit. So you can see it's a very beautiful color. Now each piece of wood is gonna stain and finish a little differently. This one's going a little bit more towards the browns, but we'll, if we want it to get a little more red, we can adjust that at the end here too. On this, to me, it's a little bit browner than I would want. So we're gonna try to do something with that a little bit. We'll see what we can do. So I'm gonna go over the dye stained areas now. So an immediate difference to my eye is that the, the difference in degree that the, fin the curl is coming out with the iron nitrate. Big, big difference. So the first thing I'm gonna do is take a piece of scotch right and try to rub it back a little bit. So that'll lighten it just a shade. And it burnishes it down a little bit too. putting a good bit of pressure. Okay, so that's pretty good. So you can see that, that changed it quite dramatically already. I think what we're gonna do on part of this is we're gonna try maybe some of this maple stain to go over top it and see what it looks like. I don't know if you can tell the difference through the camera so much, but the richness of the iron nitrate stain sample, is, it's dramatically different. So let's try to overstain a little bit and see what'll happen. So with overstaining, you can stain directly on top of this. What I often do too is I add a dye stain or a dye stain concentrate to my finish oil. 
So that's a very good option. I often use trans tint dyes sold by Woodcraft. Honey Amber works very well. But since we have this out, we're gonna try some of this maple stain. And then we'll, maybe on the second half, we'll try some of the Honey Amber and see how, how each look. So I'd say that's a very nice color there. Looking quite good. As it dries, as it soaks in the grain, it's not gonna look quite as good until I put more on or get an oil finish build up. So now let's try something else. Okay, so now we're gonna try some Honey Amber Trans Tint Dye. This is a concentrate. It can be mixed with water. It can be mixed with alcohol. It can mix, mixes with some oils well. We'll try it out. And then I'm gonna put a little drip bit on here. You can do this in different ways, but I'm gonna do it like this just because I want to. And then we're gonna try this right in here. Okay, so that looks pretty nice too. Maybe a little more golden. Try a little more, see what it does. Not too bad. So let's go ahead and put some oil over the whole thing again and we'll see what it looks like. I think it all looks pretty darn good. My preference might be this one with the iron nitrate and the maple stain on top. Although this looks pretty good here too. Now, each piece of wood is gonna stain differently. Some will come out more red with the iron nitrate. Some will be more brown. Some will be lighter in color if it's a very hard piece of wood. So it's not gonna be all the same. So one thing to keep in mind is that iron nitrate is gonna look good. It's gonna look appropriate, but try not to have set in your mind, I want it to be this color. And that's the only thing I want if you're using iron nitrate because it's probably not gonna work out that well like that. Be a little flexible. Don't try to force it to be what you want. You can tweak it and adjust it like we've done here, which is nice. But um, you know, if we wanted this to be honey color, you can see that it's not gonna do it. And it's just because there's so much curl, it's absorbing so much of the stain that we have a large percentage of the area that's pretty, uh, that's pretty dark, the, the curl end grain. So I think that was a success. I'd be happy with those on a rifle.